In this video, I'm going to show you some basic editing in Adobe Illustrator. So if your screen doesn't look like this in Adobe Illustrator, go to Window, Workspace, and make sure Essentials is clicked. Let's get started. For the first one, we're going to try to enlarge an object. If you just grab a corner and enlarge it, you can actually distort it and make it the wrong shape. So if you grab a corner and hold the Shift key, then it's going to stay the same shape, the same aspect ratio, so you can enlarge it. Again, hold the Shift key when you drag a corner. To rotate, we're going to select an object. I clicked on it, and we're going to hover over a corner until it turns the, the cursor turns into an arrow, and we can start to rotate it. Um, this, this can rotate it uh, to tenths of a degree, but if we hold the Shift key down, it's, it'll steep, keep the rotation at 45 degree increments. For the next one, we're going to resize it, but we're going to resize it uh, to a specific size. So here, I want to make it a particular width. I'm going to make it 0.5 inches. So I'm coming over to the Properties panel, and I'm just going to type in 0.5 and hit Return, and it's the correct size. I'm going to undo that. Uh, you can hit Command-Z or uh, Control-Z on a, on a PC, and show you what happens if I don't click this button. This this looks like a link. That means that the width and the height are linked, so they're going to scale proportionally. If I unclick this, then if I change one dimension to 0.5, it'll only change the width, but it didn't change the height. And that's not what I want to do here, so I'll undo that and uh, make it linked again. Next one. We're going to remove a vertex. Uh, the vertex is called an anchor point. There used to be an anchor point here. We're going to, actually, we didn't remove it. We just slid the anchor point down. So I'm going to click on this. And right now, when I'm selecting these objects, I can't, I can't select just a corner. So we're going to go to the next tool down in the toolbox called Direct Selection Tool. I'll click on this tool. And now, if I click, I can click just on an anchor. So I'm clicking on that anchor, and I'm going to drag it down. What happens if you want to remove an anchor completely? This one used to have four, now it only has three. Uh, we can go here and click with the direct selection tool, and I'll just hit the delete uh, button. Oh no, that's the wrong way to do it. Uh, let me undo that. That deleted it, but also um, got, got rid of all the segments that touch it. So instead, we're going to go to the pen tool. And now, if, if I've selected it first and go to the pen tool, there's a little minus on the pen. That means it's going to remove that, but it's not going to delete the segments that touch it. So that was a pen tool. Once it's selected, the pen tool will delete. Uh, you can also use a pen tool to add. So let me go back and select this object. Then I'll go back to the pen tool. And if now if I click, there's a little plus sign by the pen, so I'll click on that. And now I made a new vertex. I can go back to the Direct Selection Tool, the second one again. That's the one that lets you move vertices, and I can drag that in. There's a quick way to round corners. Um, you can just drag these little circles and drag them in. If you want to just round the top uh, two vertices, then you have to select only those two vertices. So you guessed it, we're in this Direct Selection Tool. So I can click and drag and select let me try that again. Yeah, I think I just selected these top two, and now I can just um, round those two uh, corners. If you want to make a, a duplicate of an object, I'll go to Selection Tool again. You can just copy and paste, so I can, um, you know, Command C and Command um, V. Um, but there's another way to do it. If you just hold down the Option key on the Mac or Alt key on the PC, I'm going to hold that down now and then click and drag, and that's a, a quick way to um, move something. I'm going to undo just to show you what happens. If you want to click and drag on it, I'm going to hold the Alt key down now. I click tell the Alt key down, but it's moving all over. What happens if I want to make it so it's lined up, so it stays um, lined up? I can hold the Shift key down as well, and now it's going to keep it lined up so that we can make multiple objects that are in line with each other. Okay, so let's, um, I'll do that again, hold the click, hold the all key down there. 
On this one, I want to flip an object. So I can flip it, I'll click this object, and now in the Properties panel, we're going to use this little button here, which will flip things back and forth horizontally over the y-axis, essentially. You can also flip things up and down the other way around, too. Here's a bunch of objects. I want to line them up so that they're all centered on each other. So I'll select all of them. Oh, by the way, um, if you select a little bit too, um, too far, if your selection box touches an object at all, it's included in the selection. So I don't have to be all that careful. I can just select like this. As long as I'm touching anywhere that object, it'll select it. So these are all all over the place. You can go to the Properties panel again, and this little button will line them up. If you want to make another object which is just a little bit bigger than the one you have, um, you can, no matter what shape it is, it doesn't have to be a rectangle, you can hit Offset Path, and you can just type in how far you want it to offset. This makes uh, a lines all the way around at 0.1 inches aw away from the original object. The next one shows you how to combine objects. This is really handy. Take a couple different um, component pieces and merge them together. I'm going to use a Pathfinder here and just click on this button. Here, I want to rem make this moon sh crescent shape, but I'm going to remove the circle. So this circle right now is above the other one. You can go to um, Arrange and make it, you know, bring this one to the top of the list if, if it doesn't work right. But I'm going to select these objects, and this will remove the, the frontmost object from the back. So that did that. In this case, I want to make this pie chart where I have different objects. That means um, this little piece of the pie is a separate object from this. So I started with a complete circle, but I want to split it up into pieces. So I'll take these, split it up into pieces, and I can't see the menu option. I can't see the button here on Pathfinder, so I'm going to divide. I click the, the three dots for, to get more options. I'm going to divide these into pieces. Now these things are grouped together, so I'm going to go to Object, I'm sorry, Edit, Ungroup. Oh no, it was Object. Let me click on that again. It was Object, Ungroup. And now each of these pieces are separate pieces. Uh, so I'm going to hit Command Z to, uh, uh, to undo that. I, I can delete this piece, and now you can treat these individually. Uh, this piece right here, I can give it a different shade color, for example. Um, so I'm going to fill it with, I don't know, brown. So there you go. Um, and when it comes time to laser cutting, um, you want only the outline. You don't want to fill, even a white fill. These things have white fills, and they're bad. Um, well, actually, this one doesn't have a fill at all, which is good. Um, this is this has a fill. I made it green just so you can see it. Um, it shows the fill pattern here. Um, we don't want it green, so I'm going to click on this to make sure this is above the the outline. This the black is the outline. This is the fill, and I'm going to click the fill to none. Um, this is important because the laser cutter needs the outlines. It, it doesn't know what to do with the fill. Even if it's white, it tries to do something funny with it. So right now, the one little interesting thing is that I can't click. I'm clicking, trying to click and select the object. I can't select the object because it's not filled. So when, it, when, you, when you do have them unfilled, you have to select an object by clicking on the edge of the object. Another thing for laser cutting is that this, that this is text. Uh, you, can, you can edit this text. Um, but if when you get the text the way you like it, the laser cutter ignores text unless you turn it into an object. So I'm going to go back to selecting this. I want to turn it into the outlines because the laser cutter can cut out text like this. If you want to cut it out, th this is what you need to do. If you want to engrave the text, you, you don't need to do this. Um, we'll talk about the differences later. So this object right here, I'm going to hit Type create outlines, and now it's turned into outlines instead of text. I can no longer edit it with the text, but I can do things like uh, change the, col the fill color. Let me go over here to this fill color, uh, make it red. So you can, you can do things like that. This is grouped together. We can ungroup it, object ungroup, and we can also then do different things with each letter, and um, there you go. That's it.